Hello friends, this is Homer Knox of MenTeachingMen.com. In this video we're going to be studying the tear bottle and the woman who was a sinner. The King James and New American Standard Version Bibles will mainly be used for a scripture translation in this video. Special thanks to Bishop K.C. Pillay for his insight into these scriptures. Luke 7, 37 to 38. And there was a woman in the city who was a sinner. And when she learned that he, Jesus, was reclining at the table in the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster vial of perfume. Verse 38. And standing behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears, and kept wiping them with the hairs of her head, and kissing his feet, and anointing them with the perfume. Tears reference mourning, rejoicing, crying for joy. Tear bottles are historical. used during the Roman times, Victorian period, the U.S. Civil War, and to the present day. Tear bottles are available for purchase on the internet. During the U.S. Civil War, women were said to have cried into the tear bottles and saved them until their husbands returned from battle. Their collected tears would be shown the men how much they were adored and missed. The woman in this scripture knew that she was a sinner. I think most of us, not all, knew that we were sinners before we got saved. When they asked me, do I believe I was a sinner, I just laughed and said, absolutely. A great picture of Jesus reclining and his disciples with the woman in back of him. This woman also knew that Jesus was eating at Simon's house. So she went to see him and obtained forgiveness. According to the custom, she could not go to a man of God or seer empty-handed. 1 Samuel 9, 8 The servant answered Saul again and said, Behold, I have in my hand a fourth of a shekel of silver. I will give it to the man of God, and he will tell us our way. To these three persons, one cannot go empty-handed. Number one is a priest. Number two is a sick person. Number three is a pregnant woman. This woman who was a sinner brought her costliest to Jesus. She stood at his feet behind him. In those days, women could not stand equal with men. Easterners do not sit in chairs. They sit on carpet with their legs crossed and eat food with their fingers. The woman began weeping and washing Jesus' feet with her tears. Remember, she was standing behind him. She could do this because he was seated on the floor. How long would it take for her to cry enough tears to wash Jesus' feet. Most likely not possible, and so we assume she used tear bottles. In many Jewish homes, a tear bottle is kept for each member of the family. Whenever a person cries, they collect the tears in the bottle. These are tears from weeping, praying, rejoicing.
When a person is buried, their tear bottle will be buried with them. It was a disgrace to be buried without the tear bottle. This woman loved Jesus enough and was prepared to be buried in disgrace without her tear bottle. She believed in him. She was willing to suffer the consequences. Philippians 3.7 The Apostle Paul is talking. I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. They believe that any tears shed for a spiritual cause will be rewarded by God. And those are the only tears that go into the tear bottle. Psalm 56.8 King David speaking You have taken account of my wanderings. Put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? King David was telling God that whatever he did for God was recorded in God's book. David did not have to bring the tear bottle to remind God. Woman wiping Jesus' feet with her hair. Why did the woman use her hair to wipe Jesus' feet? The woman wiped Jesus' feet with her hair. An Eastern woman's hair is her glory and is very long. She was showing her humility and submission. She was saying that her glory was good enough only to wash Jesus' feet. The woman showed extreme humility. Then she kissed his feet. Easterners are allowed to greet with a holy kiss. Kiss each other on the hand, forehead, crown of the head, cheek, but a kiss on the feet implies confession of sin. It was significant that she kissed his feet instead because it meant that she was ready to confess her sins to him. It was an act of asking for forgiveness. She showed a desire to be reconciled. 2 Corinthians 5.19 That God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. Any other kiss would be a display of respect or affection. Not a word needs to be said when the feet are kissed. Both parties understand. Jesus knew the significance of kissing the feet. alabaster vial of ointment. The woman also brought a vial of highly priced alabaster ointment, perfume. And she kissed and anointed Jesus' feet. Mark 14.5 What was the disciples and others' reaction? And they were scolding her. Mark 14.6 Jesus' reaction But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you bother her? She has done a good deed to me. Mark 14.9 Truly I say to you, wherever the gospel is preached in the whole world, 
what this woman has done will also be spoken of in memory of her. Matthew 28.18 Jesus has authority to forgive sins. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Luke 7.48 and verse 50 Then he, Jesus, said to her, Your sins have been forgiven. Verse 50 And he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Conclusion Tear bottle and the woman sinner. How wonderful when a sinner repents. How wonderful Jesus' forgiveness and cleansing. Do you have forgiveness of your sins? Have you been cleansed by Jesus' blood? Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the Men Teaching Men YouTube channel. This video is dedicated to the honor of Pastor Norm Marks, Harrisburg School of the Bible, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Hello friends, this is Homer Knox again. I hope you enjoyed this video teaching. The question I have for you is, are you born again? Do you know Jesus as your personal Savior? If not, why not? Why not? Jesus was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. He suffered and died under Pontius Pilate and the Romans. He was buried and he rose from the dead on the third day. He's now ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. There is salvation in no one else, no one else. And so if this has stirred your heart and you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, please pray with me. Dear Jesus, please come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sins, all my sins by your precious blood. I accept you as my personal Savior. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for cleansing me. Thank you for my home in heaven. Thank you for giving me the Holy Spirit and making me a new creature. Amen and amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer from your heart, you're now born again, you're a Christian. Welcome, welcome to the family. If you prayed this prayer after slipping away, you're now part of the family, you're back in the fold. Welcome, congratulations. There's another teaching on the menteachingmen.com website entitled, I Just Got Saved, and that video will help you with your new walk in Jesus Christ. God bless you, God bless you, amen.